Welcome to the Heal Strong podcast with me Namita Purohit as a leadership and life coach I am dedicated to guiding my clients and students towards emotional freedom inner strength and healing This Heal Strong podcast is proudly sponsored by my signature Heal Strong course and coaching program It is a well laid out road map that helps victims make a complete recovery from toxic narcissistic abuse it gives a course road map coaches and community to help you rise back to your healed and whole self in today's podcast i am going to talk about two logical and spiritual fallacies that people following a spiritual path carry especially empaths who are following a spiritual path who have faith in god uh some of them end up having this logical and spiritual fallacy something that does not serve them and something that keeps them stuck in their um very painful existence with narcissistic abuse and what i'm going to cover around today is why god or your spirituality will not heal you and it's important to understand the play between divine assistance and personal responsibility so that's what we're going to cover today and before i get into this i want to preface this podcast by saying that narcissistic abuse is very difficult to go through it robs you of your being of your dreams of your soul it chips away parts of your personality and you become a very broken version of your own self unable to function writhing in emotional and physical pain feeling like a bottomless pit in your stomach complete loss of confidence complete loss of any appreciation or any respect for one's own self having lost your confidence constantly believing everything that the narcissist says about you and so many more things where you're con- continuously in anxiety in fear in helplessness while continuing to be a sincere humble tolerant patient caring person only to find that your beautiful qualities are being abused in a uh, you know by the narcissist So having said that and having done many podcasts and many blogs and uh you know to serve you in helping you heal in helping you understand your own emotions in helping you understand your vulnerabilities and in helping you understand how to grow and glow uh and you know recognizing in the three stages of reveal deal and heal and I have full empathy for your situation and uh please watch my other podcasts hear my other podcasts on the topic to get uh solutions for those things but as your teacher and as your coach it is my responsibility to also help you work on some of the fallacies in your thinking that block you from making massive leaps in your healing and recovery So why will God not heal you? You are an extremely spiritual person. You do your prayers very sincerely and uh, you have been uh, following God's path and uh you know you have been suffering for so many years patiently um and w- wondering why can't God see how much you have suffered already? And why can't God elevate your suffering? Why can't God remove you from the suffering? Why can't God heal you? from the suffering uh and you wonder why you wonder why the lord is not intervening in your life you wonder why the lord is not making some divine arrangement and why why isn't anything happening and why has god left you and why has god forsaken you in spite of you being so sincere and this also starts shaking your faith in god and uh and i'm going to introduce you to two fallacies now and let's start with the first one The first one is the fallacy of expecting direct divine intervention. And it goes like this, I have suffered sincerely 
so much for so many years and that should be enough for god to pay attention and heal me and and this comes from a very grave misunderstanding of the nature of divine assistance and i'm going to flip this on this on your on its head why should god help you just because you have suffered and you have been in a toxic situation for very long what does god have to do with it that's my question to you okay you're expecting justice you want justice in your life and i get that so you're probably expecting that, and that god is the justice giver and that god could should give you justice for whatever you have suffered and i understand that that could be coming from there but then sometimes one way to think about it is also that maybe the suffering i'm going through is some kind of divine justice for some of the actions that i have done that's one way of thinking about it the second way of thinking about it is is that there is absolutely no uh reference anywhere where it says that just because you suffer patiently and you've suffered so much and you you know that divine intervention and divine guidance and divine help and divine healing and that god should remove you from this place um should come to you where has god promised you that where is that been promised to you right so these are some things to understand now there then i'm going to i'm going to you like there is a story that i'm going to share with you of a client who had come to me and she was a victim of toxic um sexual abuse as a child uh and there were like six incidents that she could recall uh up to the age of 12 and there were many more but she couldn't recall them but she could recall up to six incidents and she was a god fearing person she was a spiritualist person who did her daily rituals who did her daily prayers very sincerely and she could have been angry and she could have been upset with god at the age of 27 and or 29 or 30 but i am so sincere and i have you know since i have my senses since i have become an adult i am serving god so sincerely i have been i've never missed my prayers i have never missed my routine i have never missed praying to god never vis- stopped you know visiting the temple of the lord and why has god not helped me heal from all this sexual abuse that i have um experienced in my life i am suffering so much with those memories and flashbacks and dreams and there are so many fears in my body uh there's so much anxiety in my body because of all of that and because i am such a spiritual person why has god not helped me heal uh she could have asked that question but she did not she decided to work with a coach uh i was her coach and she decided to work with her coach and work on her healing she took responsibility for her healing right her she was praying to the lord to help her heal and then through that she got directed towards a coach who helped her heal in a very stepwise manner right and she took responsibility she didn't come to me saying that okay now you just heal me you know how to heal my chakras so why don't you just clean my chakras a lot of people come to me saying those things and actually i i'm i'm pretty disappointed and put off by that because that's not what i want to do i'm not your cleaning machine i'm not here to clean your chakras so that you start feeling better because no matter what cleaning i do for your chakras if you continue having certain mindsets your chakras are going to go back to the same position and if you're going to continue having certain mindsets you're going to continue being susceptible to um difficulties and narcissistic abuse in your life um i like to work with those who actually want to do that deep inner work and work on themselves and heal themselves and this is what this client had done i only did six sessions for, with her this is many years ago when i would only do very quick uh, short sessions but because she was such a great willing client and she was so committed to her own health and healing and she was not depending on the lord to like come and fix and edit things out of in her life she made such massive progress in 6 weeks to recover from the from all the vestiges and all the 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 the, the dirty energy and the feelings and the emotions of all the toxic uh, uh sexual abuse that she had gone through as a child yes so she did so because she decided to take action god helped her right god supported that energy god god uh god directed her to the right coach god 
and god gave her the energy where she could be strong and she could work on herself right so god helps those who help themselves god does not is not going to intervene in your life just because you are suffering for 27 years and 30 years it it's not a badge of honor uh when people come to me saying that i've suffered for 30 years or suffered for 15 years or suffered for 35 years uh while i feel the pain that they have gone through my question to them is why what were you trying to do uh like why did you allow yourself to be abused why did you allow all this suffering and this damage to yourself that came with all that suffering right so this 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 spiritual fallacy that divine assistance should come to me just because i have suffered for so many years uh is not how god's agency or god's protection or god's mercy works that's not how grace works and we're going to uh, delve a little bit more in this in this first point of expecting divine intervention right so god provides resources god provides teachers god provides you a uh, people who can help you with a proper systematic road map to heal and it is your job to take advantage of those of those people of those resources provided by those people to and and walk the step towards your healing right it's like there was a person drowning right a boat had capsized and a person was drowning in the ocean and he kept praying to god god help me god help me god help me god sent a helper boat a helper boat happened to be there in the near in the in in the vicinity and they let out a rope uh you know for this person to hold and so that they could pull this person back to the boat and this person said no god has to personally come and heal me and why should i even have to um you know hold this rope why do i need to do this effort of holding this rope and getting pulled i should just magically be back on on that boat and this boat of mine which is capsized should also be just magically restored on honor now that boat goes away this person doesn't take the rope and then you know there's a helicopter in the vicinity that sees that this person is drowning and then they come there and then they let out a rope and a ladder and you know for the person to hold so that they could lift this person rescue this person right and then this person is like no the helicopter you know people inside there the rescuer should come down lift me up pick me up hold my weight and take me up all the way to the helicopter and or god should personally come in the helicopter and come down and lift me up hold my weight and you know i don't want to do any work god should come and do all the work and then you know this person dies and then he meets god and then he asks god like hey you didn't help me i prayed to you so much and god's like i sent the boat i sent the helicopter but you didn't take advantage right so expecting that god should personally come and just you know make you healed and whole automatically or that the difficult situation should go away without any endeavor of mine but just because i have suffered so much it does not work that way yes so i'm emphasizing here that god provides help through teachers through coaches who are there to give you the steps to heal but you got to walk those steps even if a client comes to me and says that you just help me heal fix me i can't fix you i can do 50% of the job of sharing the road map with you but you i you got to work on those things yes so please uh understand that also that god respects free will now unless he, this drowning person is making an endeavor to hold on to that rope or to hold or to climb that ladder that was provided by the helicopter how does god know whether you really want to be healed and you want to come out of the situation or not because you're not taking any action towards it so while you may say something uh actions speak louder than words you may say i want to be healed i want to be out of this uh, situation i don't want to suffer anymore and things like that but then you have opportunities to you know grow and glow but then you don't take those opportunities so uh god is, does not know that you really want to come out of that situation so why would god pull you out of that situation because god does not uh, interfere with your free will because no matter some of us may say i i want to heal i want to come out and things like that but then some people i know uh also just like to be in that victim mindset because they're getting some sympathy in that situation right we and and some people are in those situations because they just want to continue in those um relationships or they want to not leave the security that they have received or the predictability of the abuse 
they don't want to expose themselves to a life where they don't know it's going to be unpredictable when they're not in that same situation they won't know how to handle themselves the abusers become too familiar and it's you know people choose things that are familiar now how does god know that you know god may pull you out of that situation god may heal you make you ch- you know change you and things like that and you'll be like no you pulled me out of the situation and now i want to go back and i'll i'll share a story that a friend of mine told me yesterday over dinner i had a very i was attending an event at a very nice dinner and um i was spending time with a friend um, you know with whom you know we resonate really well I'm meeting her after a very long time and she said something very interesting and you know she's a spiritual um like she helps people through you know in their spiritual growth and she said something that there was this woman who was being abused physically uh she was in a very narcissistic relationship and she was being abused physically and she just kept going on and on you know continuing in that situation and one day she the the man abandoned her and she ended up in a shelter for women and then this friend of mine uh being the spiritual um pastor uh you know providing pastoral care spiritual care for these people uh you know from the congregation she went and you know rescued this woman from the shelter helped her find a job helped her find a place to live and you know so that she could reclaim her life and things like that yes uh and then it turned out that a few years after that woman was back in that with the husband back in that same situation quit her job and all of that and went back to being the victim and been, went back to being victimized and went back to being traumatized in that situation and blaming these spiritual care people that oh you you know showed me the wrong way when i was in the spiritual care center you should have actually put me back um you know with my husband and you know you guys forced me and things like that so therefore god does not interfere uh because god i mean you know because you, what is your clear intention what do you want to do and what steps are you taking on that intention and then god would know whether you really want to you know work on this thing or not whether you want to be in or whether you want to be out of the situation or not and god is the perfect coach and god is the perfect caretaker and god does not interfere with your free will and if one chooses to remain in that situation chooses to not use their agency their empowerment the skills that they have uh, their abilities that have been you know given to them by god then e- even if god tries to help you it's not going to be effective as i just shared in the story and there are cases where god helps those helps people overcome extremely difficult situations but that comes at for those who have a very high level of surrender yes now uh and and the lord talks about that krishna talks about that in the bhagavad gita and in the shrimad bhagavatam and there are verses that explain these things and let me first refer to uh the shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto 14th chapter 8th verse uh, verses chanted by lord brahma and he says tatteno kampam susamikshamano bhunjana evatmakritam vipakam hridvagvapur bhir vidadan namaste jiveta yo mukti padesa daya daya bhak and and the translation is is that my dear lord brahma is saying this to the lord one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim now there are many qualifying uh, uh, qualifiers here for who can be liberated from a particular situation and this is like the highest moksha that you know this verse is talking about uh and now we're like trying to liberate ourselves from some difficult situation and we're expecting god's intervention but it doesn't work that way because there are some qualifying things mentioned here one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him second thing is all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and you're like yeah i have check mark one i am waiting for the lords you know to bestow his causeless mercy check mark 2 i'm patiently suffering the reactions of my past misdeeds check mark 3 offering you respectful obeisances with his heart words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim now check mark 3 how are we doing 
offering the Lord respectful obeisances with our heart, words, and body while we're suffering. Also, check mark two, how are we doing? All the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past mis misdeeds. How many of us are able to accept that the situation I am in is, is a result of my past misdeeds too? And can I just gracefully accept this situation? Does not mean you don't protect yourself. Does not mean you don't do what you need to do uh, to uh, for self-preservation. But in your heart, what is your consciousness? Are you in that consciousness? Are you in the consciousness of offering the Lord respectful obeisances with his, with your heart, words, and body while you're in that suffering situation? Uh, and this verse says, is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim. Now, only people who have these three check marks in place can have liberation as their rightful claim. And why is it a rightful claim? Because for you to be able to be in this consciousness that I am patiently suffering the reactions of my past misdeeds and offering respectful obeisances unto the Lord means you have come to a platform where you don't identify with the body and the things and the suffering and the pain and the joys that are connected to this body. This is a person acting at the soul platform, realizing that this experience I'm having in this body is connected to this body and is because of my past misdeeds. And what can I do to seek forgiveness from the Lord and all those people whom I have offended in the past? And how can I continue offering obeisances to the Lord? Uh, now, when you realize your spirit soul, you can continuously offer obeisances to the Lord with body, mind and words. Because, And what does this obeisances mean? It means that I understand I am not this body. I am spirit, soul, part and parcel of the Lord. And what I'm experiencing is not, not, not real. I am identifying with all of this. Right? Now when we come to that consciousness, then liberation becomes the rightful claim because you're already internally created that liberation consciousness where you're liberated from uh, the material experience, the bodily experience that you're having. So to expect that the Lord should come and personally intervene in your life it is going to be based on the quality of your surrender. Yes, how surrendered are you? Are you complaining, feeling like a victim? Or are you taking responsibility of your past misdeeds? What is your inner dialogue? And that is something that we need to examine with self-honesty. And how much am I identifying with this material body versus how much am I working towards the spiritual conception? How much am I stuck in victimization and uh, suffering versus how much am I um, understanding that, you know, through the suffering that this is, you know, it's called creating some kind of detachment inside of me and it's helping me grow. Now, uh, this is like point number one that I have shared with you. The first misconception that I am suffering and there needs to be direct divine intervention. Doesn't happen that way. Yes. Uh, there's also a story about the Gajendra Moksha where the elephant is struggling and the mouth of the crocodile for thousand celestial years, not thousand human years, but thousand celestial years, they're much bigger, right? But it's only when he comes in contact with his original spiritual consciousness and he and is able to pray with sincerity, uh, understanding, you know, the spiritual conception of life. That's when the, the elephant is able to pray with sincerity and that's when where the Lord is, you know, helping this person. Yes. So, so important to understand that. Now let's look at point number two, the second misconception that because I am chanting, because I am meditating, because I am praying to the Lord every day, because I am living a pure life and just by doing these things properly, I should not have any misery in my life. And because I am so spiritual and I'm studying the scriptures, it should just help me be protected from all troubles. And the spiritual life um, of just doing these uh, things properly is what is going to help me uh, come out of the suffering or is going to change. And there is only the only way is the spiritual way. And there is no other way. Uh, I should only, you know, and just chanting the holy names of the Lord is going to protect me from everything and all of that, right? And I feel that that's a very imbalanced view of understanding the true role of spiritual practices and even understanding what spiritual practice is. Now, definitely, when one chants the Lord's name with surrender, with an attitude of gratitude, the Lord's holy name is very powerful, but to do it in that transactional mood that I will chant so that my suffering goes away is not really coming from a very great place of surrender. 
the second thing is prayers help and the lord pay lord pays attention to you but what are the prayers in what mode are they in the mood of understanding i am spirit soul part and parcel of the lord and i i am offering these prayers in divine surrender so that i can use my life in the lord's service or what what is what is the mode in which you're praying right and one also needs to understand that mechanical chanting of the lord's holy names or mechanical reading of the scriptures or mechanical uh, following of your daily prayer rituals do not give any result yes because just doing that is not enough the de- the very definition of chanting the lord's holy names or reading the scriptures uh or uh doing the daily prayers includes it includes the importance of introspection as well your chanting of the lord's holy names is incomplete if you are not working on your own introspection and areas of your own inner growth your own attachments uh the mindset and the th- type of lo- you know uh fallacies and inner scripts that we hold on to in our thinking and that that is part of our spiritual growth where we work on those internal things as a part of our spirituality a lot of people mistake spirituality as just the ritual the ritual is very important but it needs to be backed by proper mananam by proper uh working on your own self on your own learned helplessness or your own self sense of um vulnerabilities your own inner scripts your own identification with matter right so all that needs to be done as well now some cultures recognize that you know oh jesus died for my sins or in some cultures you know at the time of initiation into a spiritual order the spiritual master takes away our sins and accepts our sins and they they um they have to then burn those sins by the fire of their own devotional service now in and when we think like that uh, or we think that oh i'm praying every day i'm doing this ritual i'm doing that ritual why is my life not changing yes it doesn't work that way uh because even if your sins are taken away we still have sinful tendencies right now in the case of an empath there may be certain tendencies around perfectionism that i am going to be perfect or i am going to through my love cure this empath the narcissist or things good things should come to me on their own if i'm just sincere and there are so many more uh, fallacies that an empath can carry while they can be very sincere and well meaning but there are certain fallacies that we carry and it's important or there may be this this anger like how dare i suffer and like you know the whole victimization and 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 that's natural and as i said i've done many videos on that to help you heal on those things so please don't think i'm not compassionate or empathic towards that but as your teacher it is my job to also share these things with you so we have to work on these inner conceptions just empty spiritual rituals are not going to help you you got to work on your inner conceptions also and and the rituals include the fact that you have to work on your inner purity and your inner conceptions it's just that we have decided a lot of people have decided not to work on that because it's very hard like people who come to me tell me just clean my chakras because but but i'm like no you got to work on your thought process they're like no i don't want to do that and a lot of people treat uh, spirituality like that also it's just going to clean things and i'm going to feel happy no god will intervene in your life god will help you but you got to do your own spiritual practices in the right consciousness you got to use your own agency to get help to climb that ladder and hold your own weight and come out of the ocean or to take the rope and like swim towards the boat you need to do it uh and if you don't do it it's not god's job to hold your weight and god helps those who helps themselves and god helps those to the extent to which people are surrendered to the lord and the lord says that in the bhagavad gita and he says ye yatha mam prapadyante tam stathaiva bhajam yaham mama vartamanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah so as all surrender unto me i reward them accordingly everyone follows my path in all respects o son of pritha now one may think that oh so god is this ego maniac this narcissist who wants people to surrender to him and only then he'll help them no it doesn't work like that uh, as a coach i can tell you that i can only help those people who have faith and trust in me and who are ready to follow the path that i'm showing them 
It's only then I can help them come out. So what to speak of God? God is going to help you to the extent to which you surrender to the path and the wisdom and the steps that he has shown you. And he shows you that through his instruments uh, out there, the gurus, the coaches, the teachers, the mentors who are specialized in helping you in particular aspects of life. Some people, your, your, uh, some gurus and your own spiritual practices and your own uh, level of understanding and growth in spirituality is going to help you at the soul level to rise at the soul level. But at the mental level, at the conception level, at the level of the body and the mind, at the, the, the false identification with matter and, and, and whether it's an, as an empath or a narcissist, that needs special stepwise work with the help of people who are expert in that. So therefore, uh, I would like to invite you to join the Heal Strong program to make a full recovery from narcissistic abuse. Uh, there are links in the description below and take advantage of that because things don't happen automatically. You're not just going to become healed just because you had a certain quota of suffering and that's gone because while, and, and that, that may be true that, oh, I was supposed to suffer for so long, but then if you haven't worked on your mindset, then the abuse, uh, even if the abuse is not there, you still need to heal from the effects of that abuse, the PTSD, the complex trauma, the stuff that's happened to your body um, and all of that. You, 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 it's like you're a war veteran, right? So in example, the lady I talked about could have also thought the same. I have done my rituals properly and things like that. I'll just keep sticking to my rituals and you know whatever I'm doing and my chanting and all and I'm not going to work on my inner work. No, she decided to do that and she worked on herself. So there is a great importance of personal action and personal responsibility in conjunction with spiritual practices. And let me go ahead. Spiritual practices include personal action and personal responsibility. There needs to be your purushartha, your personal effort for daiva, for divine uh, grace to act. And sometimes there may be all kinds of, you know, there's beautiful fertile soil there's beautiful rain, there's beautiful sunlight, but you haven't planted the seeds. You haven't done your part. So you're not going to get a beautiful crop and your own healing from narcissistic abuse works in the same way. God will provide the sunlight, the rain, the beautiful fertility of the soil, but you got to put the seed, which means you got to do the plowing and the tilling and the putting of the seed and all of that. And you need to work on yourself through the resources that God has provided. So I encourage you to reflect on how you can take proactive steps in your own life, personal action and responsibility in conjunction with your spiritual practices to help you heal. And how can you connect with those people that God has sent to you? And how can you invest through them in your own healing by following the roadmaps and the steps that are given to you? This is not automatic. And I'd like to sign off and I hope you have enough for introspection I say this with great compassion. I have full empathy for the pain and the difficulty that one goes through in their narcissistic abuse, um, the debilitating uh, effects of those abuse on the body, the mind, and you know the various diseases that can happen, the breaking of confidence and things like that. And I have shared steps on how to work on that in my programs, in my in my in my a podcast and in the systematic stepwise course that I have to have helped heal so many people make such great recovery from narcissistic abuse. So while saying that it is my job as a teacher to also give you a little push and help you work on your own mindset and reach out to get the healing that you need. So thank you very much and wish you all the very best.